Now we know in this country that veterans aren't treated right at all. Veterans should be taken care of for the rest of their life, no different than a senator or a congressperson. They go fight in wars. How does country repay them? How do they repay them? By just leaving them out to dry. We have veterans right now, as I make this video, underneath bridges, homeless, but yet they went far for this country which is very, very ridiculous. No veteran should be underneath the bridge. None. See, if I had to be president, they would be paid for life. You fought in a tour of war, you're paid for life because you deserve that. You went to war, you injured like that, you, you don't have limbs, or you, diseases was caused by different things you was exposed to in war, we're gonna take care of you. It's just bottom line, period. Now I want to show this clip of this brother by the name of Jerry Holloman. And I want you to hear his story. 40 years. I'm a Vietnam veteran. Then I came back and I went into Iraq. Mm -hmm. I've had cancer three times from Agent Orange. When I got here, I just got depressed and I quit getting a haircut. Before the end, I never did grow a beard. Didn't grow a beard in 40 years. I didn't know what it looked like. And so just, I let it grow. Now, I'm about like Duck Dynasty now. <laughs> I, I'm going through deep depression. I, I, I really want to throw in the towel. Why, why is it worth living? Mm -hmm. Because of the loss of it, because of them repossessing my legs like that. I was going through therapy to try to get up and walk and go home. It's not even worth it anymore. So you saw this story. This is utterly ridiculous. It's shameful. And these politicians run around here want to send these young men and women to war with these different countries. They go over there, they get maimed, they get sick, all kinds of things happen to these young men and women, and they don't care about them. This is why a lot of people, especially in our community, say, nah, I'm good on that. I, I don't I don't want to fool with that because they already called me N word here, and then I'm gonna go over there, get maimed, and come back and then treat it like this, like this brother. That's how a lot of people are. So they say that this brother, he served twice as an active duty military member. He served twice. He also was in Vietnam and he also was in Iraq. He served all the way up to that to point. So they said that the prosthetic legs that he had, so they had fit him for prosthetic legs. Then they were supposed to go and do some adjustments with it, but they ended up taking the legs because he wouldn't sign a form with Medicare because the VA wouldn't pay for it. Now the VA is supposed to pay for that. They are supposed to pay, but they didn't want to pay for it. So they said, go through Medicare. Well, Medicare said that he had a copay and he like, why should I pay a copay? I'm in this condition because of the y'all, y'all the one sent me to war. Y'all the one was the reason I was exposed to agent orange because that was a powerful herbicide that got a lot of the soldiers in Vietnam. Now this brother has beaten three forms of cancer in his lifetime, but said diabetes eventually started affecting his limbs. They said he volunteered when he was 18 years old, later a promotion as a squad leader in Vietnam. They said his condition worsened and he, could, he would end up losing his legs entirely. They said he had his right leg amputated in November, 2018, and the left one removed in April, of 2019. So it said the former army soldier was placed at a veteran's home in Collins for rehabilitation and work on regaining his mobility as a few sessions with uh, the hangar staff. It said, however, um, he was informed that the VA would be paying for his legs. He was frustrated. He opted to go a different route, Medicare. Uh, they said that he said he was never given a final cost though. The paper indicated he would be responsible for a copay, which he refused. He said, this is their responsibility and rightfully so. So on December 23rd, the hangar rep initially sent to adjust uh, the prosthetics wound up taking the limbs and leaving. Now imagine that. How could I, how could I go take some prosthetics from somebody? They can't walk and I'm going to take the, the ability to get around and walk away from them. Y'all have some evil cold-hearted people in this country. Y'all really do. Seriously. I couldn't do that. Not whatsoever. No, that, that's sad. That is utterly sad that he did that. Now they said that he was under the impression that that was his legs. 
He said, and what he's done for his country and the community, he said, and for them to take these legs is an insult. Yes, it was an insult. So he was shocked and said, and realized that he'd become one of the millions of military vets who have somehow slipped through the cracks. He said, I went to Vietnam in 1970 and stayed in the military until I was 60 years old. He said, this is ridiculous. He said, insane, really. He said, you spend so long doing something for your country and you expect it to do something in return, but it doesn't happen. This is a telltale sign of the, of the veteran, especially the black one. On top of all of that, you come back from war and you still call it the N word. You remember when the brothers came back from world war one and what they call the red summer or 1919 area where the brothers was being attacked they were pissed off that they were coming back in the military uniforms. I mean, we have never been treated right. Their brothers have been lynched in their military uniforms in this country. I, I still to this day don't understand why you would go and fight anything when you like treated that way. I just don't get it. I mean, if you're going to have me fight for you, at least respect me, at least that much respect my people. And I say, according to his purple heart, uh, home USA, profile. The brother served 40 years in the military and participated in 37 convoy missions in Iraq from 2004 to 2005. He was armed with discharge in 2010, ending his military career as a sergeant master. Why he wasn't higher than that though. You've been in the military that long, but they also talk about how blacks are not given promotions like whites are in military. Like I said, racism permeates everything in society, everything. This is why I tell you, have your Africa plan. Now, after it came out and got public about them taking the prosthetic legs, the company come back to him. Now watch this. And the employees say, here, you could have them like that because they was exposed. Like who want them like that? Like you could have them. He said, but you're not going to, but they said, but they're not going to do anything to them until the VA pays. <laughs> so it said a spokesperson for their company, Hanger, said that they can't speak on his case citing federal privacy laws. He said, but the company does not take back prosthetic device after the final delivery to a patient has been made. Well, that's a lie because it never came out. He said, final delivery, talking about the brother. So basically they gave him the legs back. But they said, we ain't going to adjust nothing. We're not going to uh, help you. We're not going to replace them with wear and tear. It's here, you could have them like that. The VA needs to pay for that. They need to pay. He did his time in the military. They need to pay. But they worrying about going to start wars with other countries, but they can't take care of the veterans that fought for them. You need to think long and hard before you sign up with the military. Think long and hard. Or if you decide to go sign up with the military, go sign up in the branch, you're not going to see too much of that combat, you know, like the Air Force, Navy, et cetera. I'm just saying, because if you out there in the army, Marines and all them, them branches like that, and they sending you into battle like that, and you come back here looking like this brother in this situation, they don't care about you. Not at all. That's why I tell y'all, I, I, I see the writings on the wall. I see how we treat it. Uh, we not appreciated for nothing we do. We have fought in every conflict. America wouldn't exist without black people. You gotta remember the revolutionary war was kicked off by Christmas addicts. It wasn't even white folks. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Black folks fought in every war this country has ever had, every conflict this country ever had. And we still not called patriotic. We still not accepted. You get what I'm saying? We still are other in words. They wouldn't have what they have today. We built America and they still don't have no respect in life for black folk. That's why I just accept, you know, everything with that. I've came to that realization. My grandfather told me a long time ago, you don't want people that don't want you. And I'm a firm believer of that. They don't want us like that. They don't, they have shown it multiple times when you have the parchment, uh, prison and then the conditions they're in. But if dogs was in that same condition, they would have a fit. You understand? So you, you have to pay attention and look at the moves and look at how we treat it. For me, like I said, you guys can do what you want. 
the future is Africa for me and getting things set up there because we have advantage here for now, but the advantage for what? Like, we, look how we treat it. Look at this veteran. Now, some people can come by and say, well, they treat white veterans the same way. They do. But then they also have a thing called medical racism too. And how black people suffer more with medical racism than any other group. So America doesn't have a good track record with veterans, period. That's to say that period don't matter about race. But when it comes to black ones, it's even worse. But leave me a comment there if you think about this particular story um, with this brother. Like I said, it, it's just messed up. It's completely messed up. And we have to really think of the moves we're making when we decide to sign that dotted line.